guys, are you ready for something different from my normal webios? This is what I would like to call a Vision 2100, something that will likely not be constructed until at least 100 years from now. However, it's a nice time to actually start thinking about proposals like these. This right here is a vacuum tunnel, or just a vacuum system really. It's, most of it is not under the tunnel, but it connects New York City with London at a speed of 4,000 miles per hour maximum. It'll only take one hour and five minutes between Manhattan and London. That's not a lot of time. This is also what some people like to refer to as the transatlantic tunnel. Now, before we get into the route, let me tell you how a vacuum tube works and what are other proposals for it. So basically what a vacuum tube is, it's like a tube in which carriages are vacuumed through a complete airless pipe, basically, at speeds exceeding a thousand miles per hour. This is possible, obviously, due to the low air resistance. And it's actually relatively cheap, even compared to standard high-speed rail. In fact, in California, entrepreneur Elon Musk is proposing a similar system from Los Angeles to San Francisco in only 30 minutes. That will only cost one-sixth the cost of a full high-speed railway line. Now, there have been many ways to cross the Atlantic. One way was to make a direct path all the way across the ocean. What I did though is like another option. I'm not saying like it's better. I think it's a little better, but it's not much better. And I'll tell you why as we get later in this web video. But it's around 500 miles longer than a direct route under the Atlantic Ocean, but only a thousand miles of tunnel under sea has to be dug. Now that's still a lot and that's still at least a 30, 40 year project to do. But if built, this would be much cheaper and it will only be 10 minutes longer between the two cities. So let's begin, shall we? So it is a year 2100. You board a train in a brand new underground New York City terminus of the vacuum line. The line will zip you underground through Bergen County, and this is all underground, at speeds eventually accelerating to 5,000 miles per hour. When it, em when it embarks from the mountains just north of Rockland County into Orange County, it will be above ground, mostly built on pillars. And it will also not use that much like real estate below the ground as the pillars that are supporting this type of system aren't that big because the system itself is relatively light when compared to a real high speed rail system. So it will continue and eventually it will parallel the Hudson and it'll even cross the Hudson past Albany. I'm not sure if there will be intermediate stops yet, but probably not at Albany. There's not much demand to go from Albany to some place in Europe just yet to necessitate a stop there. So it will continue. It will actually enter Vermont because that's where the Hudson Valley goes and like Lake Champlain. I was thinking of a route to Montreal, but come on. When it enters Canada, it's only couple miles away, I think like 70, 80 miles. No, not even that, 33. Wow, I was way off there. 33 miles from Montreal to the line. After crossing the St. Lawrence River, the line will be insanely easy to build. This is all very flat land. However, one thing to notice, I'm recording this video on Wednesday, the 14th of January. And as you can see, our latitude is steadily increasing. And in other words, winter temperatures become extremely harsh beyond Montreal and they get even worse over Iceland, but we'll get to there later. So in extreme northern Labrador, which is a province in Canada, 
the line will go under the Atlantic Ocean for the first time. Believe it or not, going north through Canada actually gives only 2,500 miles to go. This around 1,000 mile stretch pretty much compensated for 700 miles of straight sea route. And this is also for less than even half the price. And you get to look at scenic views too of the Canadian tundra rather than sit through an hour long boring ride in the Atlantic Ocean in pitch darkness. Now the this tunnel is around 500 miles long. And as you can see temperatures are declining. It enters Greenland and just goes through the southern tip, not really southern tip, but it goes across the ice cap until it comes close enough to Iceland to cross again. Now Greenland connect to Iceland, that's like a 200 mile long tunnel. And then it'll continue along Iceland on a flat, like flat meaning like slightly elevated off the ground like always, but no tunnels required. I made it bypass all the major mountains of the region. And it'll enter another tunnel and this is like a good 600 miles long to enter northern Scotland and it will actually be tunnel most of the way through northern Scotland before it reaches Edinburgh, Glaslaw. The line goes right between those two so it's 15 miles from Glaslaw and only I think 30 miles from Edinburgh not even 30, 22. So it's like both cities could access a railway station right here. But this continues at full speed. It passes through Leeds, Manchester, and enters Birmingham. And then as, and it continues on a straight line through the UK countryside, but then especially at Watford, the speed will decrease and it'll, the line will go underground as it enters the London suburbs, probably just south of the M25 motorway. And it'll roughly parallel the existing West Coast main line, although it'll actually end in St. Pancras Station and not Euston Station. This is because the channel tunnel connects directly with St. Pancras, which connects directly to mainland Europe. And there we go. This line probably just saved us half the cost, added only like 10 minutes to the overall travel time and served more metropolitan regions, especially in the UK. Now, let's get to the downsides. And I have already hinted at this, but I'll say it again. This line goes at a latitude of above 60 degrees north. If it's January and your train breaks down in Iceland, you're pretty much done unless if some innovative safety measure is taken into place. Temperatures can be 30, 40 degrees Fahrenheit below zero, which is I think around the same centigrade as well. Depends on where you live. But Greenland, Iceland, if your train breaks, good luck trying to survive in the winter. Summer, maybe around 30, 40 degrees Fahrenheit in both of these places, but winter yeah but the thing is a vacuum tube since a vacuum tube it just it won't stop there's no air so there's no air resistance so there's extremely unlikely chance that your train will break down in Iceland however if that vacuum vacuum number 35 or whatever there's several vacuums that propel the carriage through if it breaks down in middle of Greenland or Iceland for that matter, you're screwed, especially in the winter. Not to mention, to build such a thing in winter in this area above 60 degrees north latitude is almost impossible by today's engineering standards. As I said, this is a Vision 2100 and this shows. However, if this can be done, it can be a major economic boom for both Europe and North America and can serve as a model of the world to show what the future of transportation may be. So as long as if your train doesn't break down in Greenland 
or crash in Iceland during the winter. It's a safe route. It's quick, not much underwater. What else do you want? That's it. Thank you for watching and next week we'll be back in America looking at some more realistic short-term transportation goals. Goodbye.